With multimeters, they range from a few dollars all the way up to several hundred dollars. The big difference between them is the quality of the measurement and what type of measurements they do. For diagnosing tools, even the cheapest multimeter will do the job. In this video, we'll be looking at a few multimeters, the different symbols on each, and how we would use them to diagnose a problem. The main thing we use multimeters for is measuring voltage, current, resistance, and continuity. Each one of these meters displays them slightly different. In the first meter, this symbol above, the solid line with the dots, tells us we're dealing with DC. With the curve, we're dealing with AC. The second meter, we can see the same symbols are reproduced and also on the third. We also have a range scale, depending on what voltage we're using. Same thing with this. And a more expensive one, it does it automatically. With current, we're looking for the letter A, which is for amperage. Again, we have A with a range scale. On this particular multimeter, it does not measure amperage at all. And on the last one, we can see amperage by the capital A, but there is no scale because it's automatically determined. For resistance, we're looking for either the omega symbol or the word ohm. In this case, it's simply the omega, which is the same on all three devices. And for continuity, we're looking for either the diode symbol or a diode with a sound symbol. For diagnosing tools, we can use the voltage to determine if the batteries are dead or if the cord is getting proper power. We can use continuity to determine if there's any breaks in the lines or if there's any problems with the switches. And current, typically we do not use in our basic testing of our tools. For measuring voltage, we're gonna use a multimeter that has multi-range. So we're gonna set the other two aside for now. When you're measuring voltage, it's always best to start at the highest range and work your way down. So in this case, we're measuring a battery, which we know is 1.5 volts, which is written right onto it. We can safely drop it all the way down to a 20 volt maximum. If we don't know what the voltage is, it's always best to start at the highest range and work your way down. Otherwise you could cause damage on a cheaper multimeter. We'll simply put our black connector into the common. We'll put our red connector into the voltage, start at the highest, and we'll do our measurement. In this case, as we have it set at 600 volts, and this battery is nowhere even close, it's going to still read zero. As we start dropping it, the meter will then start being able to read it. In this case, it's already reading it as 1.4. On a 20 volt scale, it's going to be even more accurate. and measuring in as 1.55. If we repeat that same measurement with the same battery on our most expensive meter, we'll see an extremely accurate result, more accurate than we actually need for our measurements. For measuring continuity to see if a switch is working, what we're trying to determine is whether the power is actually going through the switch, which basically starts at one end and works its way to the second end. To do that, we need to find a meter with continuity or for this particular meter, we can simply use resistance, set it to the lowest setting, which will come up with infinite resistance of one, which means power cannot flow. And if we connect the two together, resistance shall get as close to zero as possible. The wires will always add some resistance, but this allows us to determine whether a switch is working by putting the first wire on the input of the switch and the second wire on the output of the switch. Again, if we have it reversed, it makes no difference because we're only measuring resistance. Do any of your tools need a repair? Visit us at ereplacementparts.com and easily find the parts you need and have them shipped right to your door.